Hello, friends. This is Dennis Calhoun of the Old North Church in Marblehead, Massachusetts, where I have had the privilege of serving as senior minister for the last 12 years. We're delighted that you're with us this morning. We're an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ, and no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We're glad that you're worshiping with us today on this Palm Sunday, the first day of Holy Week. We will have other services this week, and I would like you to, to tune in and join us on our YouTube channel, Old North Church Marblehead. On Monday, Thursday, we'll be posting a service that will go up by 7 p.m. in the evening. And then on Good Friday, a service based on the Stations of the Cross, prayerful meditations that will be posted by 3 p.m. on Friday. And then we hope you'll join us for an Easter Sunday celebration from the comfort of our own homes, which we'll post at 10 o'clock next Sunday morning. But here we are now, and it's good to be together in this way, at this time, and for this purpose. So I invite you to join with me and take a deep breath as we transition from however we got here to where we are now. We are in the presence of Almighty God. In this time of crisis and opportunity, we have gathered from our varied homes and our scattered lives to remember that we are God's people, to embody our faith and hope in Jesus Christ and be nurtured by our communion in the Holy Spirit. As we worship together, may our souls be uplifted by the sure and certain faith that God is with us in the midst of all that is. Please will you join me in prayers of invocation. Holy One, today we begin the walk to Jerusalem, the holy week, the demand that we face the darkness, the broken path, the abuse of power. Today we notice how different life is and how much we long for your presence with us. Today we walk toward the day spring breaking through, the Easter day of joy. Today, we feel deeply the mystery of our faith, life persisting through death, hope 
persisting through despair. Jesus persisting through the brokenness of our world. God, open us up to see what holiness resides within and around us so that we may worship you here and now. Amen. We pray now in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as on, it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please, will you join me in our prayers of confession and assurance of pardon? Jesus rode into Jerusalem, not as a conquering king, but in humility, the servant king, ready to complete the task for which he had walked this world. Holy One, forgive us those times when we think too highly of ourselves and remind us always that you ask from us lives dedicated to service, to you and to our neighbors, wherever and whoever they might be. Enable us to take off our cloaks of self-interest and self-righteousness and lay them down at your feet. Hear us in the silence as we confess our failures to love you and serve our neighbors. Beloved ones, Hear the good news. We are walking difficult, unfamiliar roads, and Jesus walks alongside us. God forgives us and empowers us to live lives of persistent faith, persistent love, and even persistent joy, not just in some far off heaven, but right here in the brokenness of our world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning, my name is Karen Kilty, and it is my pleasure to serve as the Director of Children's Ministries at Old North Church. This is the time in our service where we would invite our children to come forward. Time for the children's moment that we share in the, in the sanctuary each Sunday. So this morning, children, I invite you to lean in just a little closer. On Palm Sunday, we celebrate Jesus coming to Jerusalem He's been busy traveling and teaching. He called to his, he's called to friends and fishermen along the way, come and follow me. He has reached out and became friends with at that time the most unexpected people, the poor, the sick, the outcast, scooping them up and teaching them of God's love, God's promise, same promise that we hold so tightly onto today. On this day, Palm Sunday, Jesus rides into the city on the back of a donkey. The crowds, crowds of people gather to cheer him, placing their cloaks and palms on the road for him to travel over. There's a great feeling of hope in the air as they wave their palm branches and they shout, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. During this week ahead, we we will hear stories this time of Holy Week. We will hear of how the celebration of shouts of joy, waving of palms, turns upside down, becomes something very unfamiliar. Jesus knows hard things lie ahead. He tries to prepare his friends of the sudden and unsettling shifts that might occur. It's a scary time. A time for them, a time for Jesus. The week became a time of fear and isolation, loneliness, a time of worry, a time of uncertainty about the future. 
We know something about an unsettling shift, the change. The world has changed and shifted. Chains of changes of joy that were only a few weeks ago that we gathered together in worship. That time of being close, the time of hearing music and hearing words of God's love. It wasn't that long ago, but we still can be together. We still have that feeling of being together. Places like this, being able to video myself from my home into your home, time that we gather under the tent on Sunday afternoons, just that time of being together, seeing each other's faces is a comfort. During Holy Week, we will hear the stories how Jesus and his disciples and all those who loved him most experienced the loneliness and pain and even death. It might seem like a bit much. We're already dealing with a lot. To have to hear these stories are really hard. But let us remember the good news of Holy Week and remember that Jesus himself has experienced feelings like we have. And Jesus is with us now even when we're scared and when we're full of joy. Times of uncertainty, times of worry, Jesus is there right, right alongside us, loving us, reminding us of God's love. And let us remember that promise that no matter what we face, no matter how hard times might feel, even in the face of death itself, there is still the promise of resurrection, of new life the promise of Easter, which is not far away. So on this Palm Sunday, wherever we are, let us wave our palms with joy, finding hope in the promise of new life and of Jesus with us. Good morning. I'm Jill Dearborn, a deacon at Old North Church, and I'd like to read to you this morning our first scripture lesson. It's Psalm 118, verses 1 through 2, and 19 through 29. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Good morning, my name is Catherine Redmond and I'm a deacon here at Old North Church. This morning's gospel reading is from the 21st chapter of Matthew. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them they brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, 
and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of them and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. We have heard these words from Scripture. Let us find within them the word of God. Hello. Will you join me in prayer? Holy One, who has spoken in the past and is still speaking now, hear us as we pray. Open our hearts and minds to your Spirit. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, this is Palm Sunday. But as we all know, this year is different. This year we can't be together in one place to voice that well-known and oft-told story with its poignant power. This year we are all at home, doing our best to stay safe and stay well and stop the spread of a virus none of us had any inkling of last Palm Sunday. This is also one of those Sundays when you just might hear a familiar old story in a new way. Notice something you hadn't noticed before, or think of something that you'd never thought of. For me this Palm Sunday, it's the donkey. Or in Matthew's telling of the story, the donkey and that other animal not mentioned in the other Gospels, a colt, the foal of a donkey. Now. I don't know how someone can ride two animals at once, but if anyone could do it, my money would be on the guy who could also walk on water. Forgive my attempt at religious humor, but we all need a reason to laugh these days, and I certainly don't think Jesus would mind. But seriously, I've been thinking about the animals in this story, that donkey, that colt, the foal of a donkey the beasts of burden that I'd never thought much about. If there's any theological significance to Matthew's mention of two animals, I wasn't able to find it. But this donkey had a role in Jewish messianic expectations during the time of Jesus. So I've been thinking about the Messiah's donkey in this story of ours. According to Wikipedia, in Jewish tradition, the Messiah's donkey refers to the donkey upon which the Messiah will arrive to redeem the world at the end of days. This is a reference to a passage in the book of Zephaniah in what we Christians call the Old Testament. But Wikipedia goes on to note that in modern Hebrew, the phrase the Messiah's donkey is used to refer to someone who does the dirty work on behalf of someone else. I'm not sure I'd call it dirty work. In fact, I'd call it holy work. But I've been thinking this week about the people we often overlook in the stories of daily life that have become so well-known, so familiar, so mundane, until life takes a turn like the turn we're living through these days. Suddenly, because life seems to hang in the balance, our well-being seems to rest in the hands of people we don't always appreciate for what they do. I'm thinking not just of the doctors and nurses and respiratory therapists and first responders so much in the news these days. I'm also thinking of the nurses aides and the lab technicians and dietitians and housekeepers and laundry workers in the hospitals and nursing homes. People who are fighting for our lives as they fight for their own. I'm thinking of the police officers and firefighters and EMTs and National Guard personnel who are on the front lines of this deadly battle. I'm thinking of the shelf stockers and cashiers and managers at the grocery stores and pharmacies 
where we shop for the food and medicine we need to stay healthy and alive. I'm thinking of the bank tellers and mail carriers and truck drivers that are keeping the wheels of commerce turning as the rest of us stay home to flatten the curve we couldn't imagine this time last month. I'm thinking of the pole climbers and line splicers and cable installers and server farm technicians that make it possible for us to gather through YouTube and FaceTime and email and Zoom. I'm thinking of the farm workers and personal caregivers and housekeepers, all the people who can't work from home for their minimum wage to help others but receive little or no help in return. I'm thinking of all those people we encounter every day, but have probably never thought about how much we depend on them doing what they do to make our lives what they are. I'm thinking of so many people who, like the Messiah's donkey in Matthew's Gospel, I often overlook in the story of my life. My story, my life, would not be what it is without all those people just as the story of Palm Sunday would not be the same without that donkey, that colt, the foal of a donkey. I will admit that as this pandemic spreads, I have a new appreciation for people I so often fail to notice. Matthew tells us that when Jesus arrived in the village of Bethphage on his way up to Jerusalem, he told two of his disciples to go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them. The Lord needs them. All those people who are doing the holy work of saving lives, the Lord needs them. Friends, so do we. Our way of life, indeed our very lives, depend on them. Matthew tells us that the disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and the crowds that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! Hosanna, the people shouted. Hosanna! The word is used in the New Testament as an expression of adulation and praise. But in the Hebrew Bible, it is used only in verses such as help or save, I pray. Help us, save us, shouted the crowd that surrounded the Messiah's donkey and the humble savior the donkey bore. A very large crowd, Matthew tells us. Let's hope we can gather soon as a very large crowd. For now, we know crowds are dangerous. But when this pandemic passes, we will be able to crowd together again And won't it be wonderful? When this is all over and it's safe to gather in crowds again, we ought to do just that. We ought to flood the streets of every village and town and city across the globe in one giant parade to welcome and thank and honor all those people who are helping save us during this plague of biblical proportions. Of course, the Messiah's donkey is not the main character in the Palm Sunday story. The Messiah is. We know the story. After his triumphal entry into the walled city of Jerusalem, the parade of palms ends and the jubilant crowds are dispersed by the authorities who know that crowds can be dangerous to the social order, especially crowds that don't have what they need Crowds can get restless and rowdy and worried about their well-being as those who lord it over them watch from a safe social distance. Roman-occupied Jerusalem was a city on the brink of upheaval in those turbulent times when Jesus showed up announcing a new kingdom was at hand. 
And the elites knew this Jesus was spreading a threat to their wealth and power. The threat had to be quarantined so it wouldn't spread, and its source had to be identified and eliminated. We will tell that part of the story when we gather to worship virtually on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday later this week. It's a story of God's saving work in this world, a story of a Savior who entered the scene on a humble donkey. The Messiah is the central character of this story of salvation, but the Messiah's donkey plays the supporting role, at least in this scene. G.K. Chesterton was an English writer, philosopher, and theologian. He penned a poem that gave voice to the Messiah's donkey. It's set in a strange and unusual world we would not recognize as anything like the world we thought we knew, which makes it all the more like the world we know now. In that world, a world in which she was rarely, if ever noticed, the donkey arrives at a new self-understanding when she finds herself in the midst of a parade. Listen. When forests walked and fishes flew and figs grew upon thorn, some moment when the moon was blood, then surely I was born. With monstrous head and sickening bray, and ears like errant wings, the devil's walking parody of all four-legged things. The battered outlaw of the earth, of ancient crooked will, scourge, beat, deride me, I am dumb. I will keep my secret still. Fools, for I also had my hour, one far fierce hour and sweet. There was a shout around my head and palms about my feet. Palm Sunday is the celebration of our story about the arrival of a humble savior on a humble donkey and a colt, the foal of a donkey. The Messiah's donkey. The Lord needs them. Indeed, and so do we. Thank God for putting them in our story. Hosanna, help us, save us. On this pandemic Palm Sunday, let us give thanks and praise for all those the Lord needs and all that have answered the call. Hosanna in the highest. Shall we pray? God of grace and God of glory, we come today to offer our thanks and praise for your love, your salvation, your spirit. We come today to bless your name and celebrate your triumphal entry into our lives. May we open the gates of our hearts to receive you in this historic Holy Week. O oh God, we pray for ourselves and for our world, a world shaken by a virus we cannot see, a virus that does not recognize race or religion or social class, a virus that knows no international boundaries, no state borders, no city limits. We do not know how and when this pandemic will end, but we know it will. And we know that until then, you are with us, spreading help and hope and a power that can conquer sickness and death. O Holy One, we give you thanks and praise for those on the front lines, those who are working to provide food for our tables, healing for our bodies, succor for our souls. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are those who are doing holy work. Save them, save us, and help us save others. Fill us with your power, O Holy One, the power to love lavishly and sacrifice selflessly and to help heroically to bring hope and health to this world. For we lift our prayers in the blessed name and spirit of Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again, that we might have life 
and have it in abundance. Amen. Hello. At this point in our service, we would typically pause to receive our morning gifts and offerings and hear a lovely anthem by our choir. Of course, we're not gathered together this year, so we can't do that. But in lieu of that, I would mention this. We know, of course, that this pandemic has had enormous economic impacts so far, and we don't know what's yet to come. We know some right in our local community will be affected, and we as a church stand by ready to offer what support we can. We are blessed in that way. April is typically the month that we support the Marblehead Food Pantry, usually by bringing donations of food that people have picked up at the supermarkets and bring to the church for that purpose. But this year, because of the recommendation of our local health board, the food pantry is not receiving donations in kind. What they're doing is shopping for their clients and clients can pick the food up at the food pantry. So what we are asking you to consider doing is supporting the Marblehead Food Pantry with a donation, a donation of cash so that their shoppers can provide groceries for our neighbors in need. If you feel moved to make that donation, please do so. You can write a check to the Marblehead Food Pantry and put in the memo line, Old North Church, and then send it to 80 Atlantic Avenue, Marblehead, Massachusetts, 01945. Again, that's the Marblehead Food Pantry, 80 Atlantic Avenue, Marblehead, Massachusetts, 01945. And of course, if you are able, we hope you can continue to sustain the work and ministry of the church with your generous donations. You can either leave them at the church, mail them to the church, or if you give electronically, that'll work too. Thanks so much. God bless you. Good morning. Greetings from the choir loft at Old North Church in Marblehead on this Palm Sunday. I would like to draw your attention to the suggested listening for today first, and then I would like to talk to you about the anthem that we've selected. The suggested listening begins with Dan Forrest's Requiem for the Living. That is the piece that we had selected to perform for this year's Lenten Choral Concert with the Old North Festival Chorus, Soloists, and Orchestra. It's a very beautiful piece of music, and it's eerily appropriate for the times we're going through right now. I hope you'll find some time this week to listen to it in full, and I hope you will remember that you will hear this eventually live in this sanctuary. To all the choir members who are missing each other, I miss you too, and I look forward to when we can gather together safely, and we will perform this piece together. Another piece of music that you would have been hearing this evening or possibly participating in is our processional hymn, which would be O Sacred Head Now Wounded. I'd like to talk to you for just a minute about the history of that piece. O Sacred Head Now Wounded was actually, the tune was actually composed by Hans Leo Hassler in the early 1600s, and it was a love song. I usually point this out to, I won't say who they are, but maybe a couple of basses in the bass section who don't like it when we change the words to our hymns. Actually, hymns are meant to be interchangeable with certain tunes. You know who you are. Anyway, Hans Leo Hassler uh, composed this piece as a secular love song. In the early 1800s, Johann Sebastian Bach adapted it as a chorale and incorporated into his glorious St. Matthew Passion. That was in turn adapted into the hymns, or the hymn that we now know as O Sacred Head Now Wounded, which is found in every denomination and every hymnal all over the world in different languages. And it's known at now as the Passion Chorale. We sing it always on Monday, Thursday, and we generally sing it at our Lenten concerts, and many of you have participated in that as con congregational singing. Deeply moving piece of music. In my travels this week, and thinking about the 5,000 pieces I'd love to share with all of you, something that came to my radar was Paul Simon's American Tune, and it reminded me that he based his iconic song on this exact tune, O Sacred Head No Wounded. It's a very beautiful piece of music. It was stirring when it was first composed in 1975, and it continues to be. Many of you have seen it, 
either at awards ceremonies like Lincoln Center, or you might have heard it covered by Eva Cassidy or some jazz artists. It's just something that's been part of our consciousness for many years. When I listened to it again, it was as deeply moving to me as the Passion Chorale. And I thought about the fact that this tune has been with us since the, since the 1600s. And I find solace in that. I find this the very power of music and how connected we all feel. And it gives me hope. And I hope it will be moving to you as well. I found a link of Paul Simon performing this piece on March 19th from his home and in reaction to COVID-19. And it was very moving. So I do, again, hope you'll take some time to listen to it. I also put a couple of other pieces on there which are do not need any explanation, and I hope you'll enjoy. I'd like to speak to you about the anthem for this morning, which will be the next part of this video. It's taken from a performance that we did in 2018 of the Brahms Requiem at our annual choral concert. The Brahms Requiem is often referred to as a human requiem. Brahms included texts that were intended to bring comfort to the living rather than prayers for the souls of the dead. There are many biblical references, but Brahms insisted that this be accessible to all mankind and not a particular denomination. After hearing the premiere of this extraordinary work in Bremen, Germany, and by the way, in a church that I happen to have visited annually for the last 10 years, and it's beautiful. Um, after hearing that premiere, Brahms integrated the fifth movement into the Requiem. When the festival course performed the Requiem on Palm Sunday in 2018, somebody in the audience, most likely a fan of Holly's, uh, filmed this fifth movement on their iPhone, which is why we're able to incorporate it as today's anthem. I'm very grateful to all of the instrumentalists and the chorus members who gave us permission to use this video. It's thought that Brahms integrated this movement as he was reflecting on the death of his own mother. The opening passage is from John 16, part of Jesus' farewell address to his disciples as he prepares them for his own death. The movement is scored serenely for soprano, soloist, and chorus. This is thought to personalize the comfort we are yearning for by comparing God to a mother comforting her own child. The text is, you now have sorrow, but I will see you again. To which the chorus replies, thee I will comfort as one whom a mother comforts. It's a stunningly beautiful piece of music. And I feel that the Brahms Requiem and the Forest Requiem have in common that they are dedicated to those who are alive and grieving rather than prayers for the souls of the dead. There is no piece of music which is inappropriate during this Lenten season if it brings you comfort. And I hope that you will enjoy today's anthem and I hope you'll enjoy the suggested listening. Stay well.
Beloved, we come now to our time of communion. I asked my wife, the Reverend Ashley Popperson, to join me for this time so that you could see our family gathering around our table. Jesus said, come to me, all you that are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. From our kitchen tables and coffee tables and TV trays and picnic blankets, we are invited to come together to share in the communion of God's love. Our United Church of Christ tradition teaches us that Jesus is present with us through the act of sharing in this sacrament. Jesus is not bound to a specific place, specific materials, or the actions of a specific person. We believe that Christ is present with us by the Holy Spirit whenever and wherever we, the church, share this sacrament together. So the table you are using right now is no longer your table alone. It is part of Christ's table, and you are part of Christ's church. Come, church, to the table of grace. If you haven't set your communion table yet, pause this video and go get something like bread. I've used here a little bit of a loaf of bread that Ashley baked earlier this week. And get something in a cup and bring them to your table. Whatever it is, it will be enough. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the beginning your spirit blew over the chaos brought light into the darkness and made this beautiful, breakable world and called it good. Over and over again, you called for us to care for this world and one another. And over and over again, we chose our own paths. You sent prophets and teachers to guide us in the ways of justice and truth. And sometimes we listened, but mostly we didn't. And so you chose to come to us in the person of Jesus, to show us the very embodiment of your love in our world of brokenness and pain. His love reached out to those who were lonely and scared and hurting, and he did not stay far off. Today we need that love reaching us in our fear and isolation. Today we praise you as the people of Jerusalem did when Jesus rode into town on a donkey proclaiming, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Beloved ones, we now bless our elements of bread and cup. Will you reach out your hands in blessing over your communion? God of the impossible, bless this bread, these crackers, these cookies, these bagels, and make them for us to be the body of Christ, the presence of pure, unbroken love in our lives. Bless these cups full of wine or juice or water or coffee and make them be for us the cup of new life. Bless us that we might be people of love and new life, signs of your presence in this world. As I recall the story of the Last Supper, I invite you to lift up and break your bread and lift up your cup and share communion with whoever is there with you, following my lead. We remember that on the night he was betrayed, our Lord took bread and he gave you thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. People of God, take and eat the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Ashley, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Lindsay, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. And after supper, he took the cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. And he passed it around saying, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of it, 
Do so in remembrance of me. People of God, take and drink the cup of new life. Lindsay, the cup of new life for you. Amen. Ashley, the cup of new life for you. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Life-giving God, we thank you for breaking into our world and breaking into our lives. We thank you that though we are far apart, we are bound together by your love and by this communion. May what we have received today strengthen our hearts and bodies and spirits for the difficult days to come. We pray all this in the name of the one who came, that we might know never-ending love, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's go out into the world in peace and joy, raising shouts of Hosanna. And in Christ's name, be the humble who make others proud, the poor who have riches to share, the weak who help others be strong, the empty who overflow with loving kindness. And the largesse of God's love, the treasure of Christ's grace, and the health of the Holy Spirit will be with us now and forever. Amen.